Hello everyone and welcome back to another video lecture for chapter 9. We're going to wrap up our discussion of these bonding versus non-bonding domains and then look at some example problems for how to take a chemical formula, construct a Lewis symbol, and then determine uh, electronic and molecular geometries slash domains. When we were speaking in the last video of electron domains, uh, we sort of assumed that they were all the same in terms of the counting. So a double bond is the same as a single bond in terms of counting the number of electron domains. But it turns out that non-bonding domains or multiple bonds impact the other electron domains uh, and can change the geometry of a molecule uh, in a slightly qualitative way. So if we think about a bonding domain, the bonding domains are generally the overlap between uh, the electron clouds of each atom and they are sandwiched between those atoms, so they are pretty confined. By being so tightly confined, the electrons in this bonding domain don't push as much on the other electrons which may be around the central atom. But if I have a non-bonding domain, like shown here, there's only one nucleus that those electrons are attracted to, and so they spread out uh, and take up a much larger volume than a bonding domain. Consequently, they will repel any other electrons which are around the nucleus more strongly than a bonding domain. So if we think about the influence of lone pairs on the geometry of a molecule, it is that the increasing number of lone pairs will lead to a decreasing bond angle between the atoms. Take a look at our uh, three molecules that we used to discuss the shape tetrahedral in the last video. Carbon and four hydrogens, methane, CH4, is a perfect tetrahedron in the ideal case. The angle between two of those hydrogens is 109.5 degrees. So the hydrogen-carbon hydrogen angle has this value. You are expected to know the qualitative value, 109.5. That is the bond angle that goes for the ideal tetrahedron. But when we increase the number of lone pairs, like for ammonia, NH3, with now one lone pair, this lone pair repels the other bonding domains more strongly than a, than a normal bond, a regular bond. And as a result, the angle between the hydrogen nitrogen and hydrogen has decreased because the non-bonding domain repels the other domains more strongly than a bonding domain. If we go up one more non-bonding domain and look at water, the angle has de decreased even further because now these two non-bonding uh, pairs really push against those bonding domains and consequently the angle gets smaller. So, in general, the non-bonding domains will impact the bond angles more strongly uh, than the bonding domains. What about situations where we have several bonding domains, but they're not equivalent? Like in a molecule, uh, CCl2O, this molecule down here on the bottom. Carbon in the middle connected to two chlorines with a double bond to the oxygen. Each of these domains counts as one bonding domain, but the amount of electron density inside of the double bond is larger than in the single bond. Remember there are four electrons here, and only two per bond in the others. Consequently, these electrons in this multiple bond will repel the single bonds more strongly than a single bond. So if we think about a perfect trigonal uh, planar geometry, the angle between two exterior atoms, for instance in carbon trichloride, would be 120 degrees. But by introducing this double bond, then we push these CCl bonds farther from the CO bond and end up decreasing the chlorine-carbon-chlorine bond angle. So in this case, two of the angles actually get larger, uh, and we see one of the angles uh, get smaller. And again, that common theme being that multiple bonds 
in one electron domain repel other electron domains more strongly than a single bond. So we can have deviations from the ideal geometries uh, depending on the details uh, of those electron domains, uh, but the basic shapes are still determined by the number of electron domains and the number of non-bonding domains as we discussed in a previous video. What this really means though is that we can look at a complex molecule, a molecule that may have several atoms linked together, and really think about what the three-dimensional shape of that molecule would be. As the molecules get bigger, then their shapes become more complicated. And if you proceed to organic chemistry, you'll learn more about how organic chemists qualify and uh, describe the shapes of these molecules. But for us right now, it's enough to take slices and look at each individual uh, bit. So for instance, I've got a molecule where uh, the dark colored uh, spheres are carbons, uh, red would be oxygen, and then white for hydrogen. And so there are different molecular geometries depending on which central atom we're looking at. Uh, but if we use the skills that we've developed in this chapter, then we can actually uh, you know, break down uh, these uh, central atoms and determine the electronic and molecular geometry. For a molecule uh, such as this, if I'm looking at this atom on the left, then, uh, I'm sorry, at the central carbon here on the left, so we're looking at the carbon here, that carbon is attached to a hydrogen, another hydrogen out back, one more, and then finally to a carbon down below. And so in this case, I've got four electron domains around that carbon. Four electron domains, four bonding domains, and that means the molecular geometry is tetrahedral. Keep in mind that since there are no non-bonding pairs, the electronic and molecular geometry are the same. So that's how it would work for, say, this atom on the left, the carbon. But what if we look at that carbon in the middle? This carbon in the middle is double bonded to an oxygen, bound to a carbon, and bound to a single bond, uh, bound with a single bond to the oxygen here. In this case, there are only three electron domains around the carbon. Three electron domains, three bonding domains, and that would mean trigonal planar. And that's true for both the electronic and molecular geometry. But what about this last central atom here? In this case, we're looking at an oxygen, which is connected to a carbon and connected to a hydrogen. What's not shown in this image is the fact that the oxygen has two lone pairs in order so that uh, the oxygen will have an octet if we draw that little box around it. Right? So there are eight electrons around the oxygen so that it has the octet. And this means that consequently there are four electron domains, but only two bonding. And if there's a difference, now the molecular geometry and electronic geometry are different. The electronic geometry is tetrahedral. That's what we've been talking about. But the molecular geometry is going to be bent because the molecular geometry focuses on only the atoms. And so that's why it has this bent shape, if you will. So that's how we can use these ideas to break down the Lewis structures. Before we break, I do want to do one more quick example. In the Chapter 8 lecture videos, we learned about a molecule chlorate, which had a basic Lewis structure which looked like the following. I'm not going through the details of how we built this, and uh, if you'd like to see that, please check out a previous video. But here's our basic example for chlorate. And if we're looking at a molecule like chlorate, and we want to think about the electronic and molecular geometry of the chlorine, well, we need to count up the number of bonding and non-bonding domains around the central atom. 
In this case, I'm going to have three bonding domains. And those are the single bonds uh, to each of the oxygens. I also have one non-bonding domain. As a result, the total number of do uh, domains is four, right? I have four total electron domains. Three of them are bonding. And one of them is non-bonding. Consequently, this means the electronic and molecular geometries are different. The electronic geometry comes from the number of electronic domains, and that would be tetrahedral in this case, since I have four electronic domains. But the molecular geometry depends on the number of bonding domains. If I have three bonding uh, and one non-bonding domain, the shape is trigonal pyramidal. So this is a way that we can take the formula, draw a Lewis structure, and then break down that Lewis structure into domains for the electrons, both bonding and non-bonding, which we can then use in order to determine the molecular and electronic geometries. I hope this example helps you through the classwork problems. Please let me know if you have any questions.